oh, the scene emo era Becca would be wetting herself right now. Unfortunately, we are in our wholesome cottage eco era. This is not what we want. Hello everybody, it has been a minute since I last posted on YouTube. So I wanted to fill you in on where I've been, what I've been doing, what I've been up to and how I'm going on. Since my last video, life has been a little bit hectic and I know I'm not unique in saying that, everybody's lives are hectic. Um, you know, we all have periods where we feel like we can't breathe, there's too much going on and you know, it all gets a little bit overwhelming. I fully appreciate that. But I'm just saying that has been my life recently. The reason it's been so hectic has been for some incredible reasons, but also some quite sad reasons. So I think I just needed to take a step back from it all. Those of you who have been following me for a while will know that September is a bit of a wobbly month for me. Um, a lot of stuff happened around this time, this time, around September time, five years ago, I got married to a man called Dan and unfortunately he passed away um, in September as well. So it's a bit of a, it's a month that I feel like I can never prepare for. Do you know what I mean? Like you know it's coming up, you know what the dates mean and you know like I'm one of those people that is just like, I don't want, you know, to remember death anniversaries. I don't remember that. I want to remember living anniversaries, things, you know, that are important like that. But I think your body knows. I think you get a sense of, you know, the years passing and what happened on certain days. I don't really know, but basically every time I go, it's gonna be fine and then September isn't. So we also had some sad news because my family cat passed away. And I know some of you really are not cat people, completely get it, that's fine. But my family are extremely cat people. Um, again, you'll know if you followed us for a while that Poppy, my cat, is with my parents. And to be honest, she has been a godsend when it comes to my parents because they're not coming into an empty house now just because my family cat isn't there they have her which is perfect she's been such a great support for them and that makes me so happy uh, to know that they have her but that was really sad um I think as well I'm trying to explain it to people it's like he wasn't just a cat to me so he was 19 I think so you know I was a kid when we got when we got him and I remember you know like going to the vet the first time and like it was such a key point you know in my life where you know we got this little, little kitten and I was so excited and so it feels a bit like now he's not here that element of my life is not here anymore so it's kind of mourning a lot of things not just just the cat but the period of time I had with him as well you know he was there for me throughout all my secondary school years, all my university years, you know, everything that happened with Dan, everything, like he was there and he was always really snuggly and yeah, it just felt like the end of a chapter and that is really sad and very difficult. Um, so that was something else that happened in September. As well as that, you know, lots of good things did happen. We have got a very, very exciting trip planned for November hopefully which I'm not going to say too much about because I don't even know all that much about it right now so I I don't even I don't even know whether it's happening or not but it's planned and it's it's in the diary so we'll see and I'm planning to bring my camera with you for that we also went to Cornwall, which I did actually film. So hopefully at some point that will be up on the channel and you can watch it and see me awkwardly talk to the camera out in the wild and you know, that, that'll that be great. <laughs> and so it's been a great month as well. It's not just been this really sad, depressing month. I also think I have 
learned a lot about myself generally way before September, you know, with journaling, with meditation and therapy and things like that. I prepared myself as best I could and then reacted in a way that was much better than I would have done a couple of years ago. So that's really good, that's really positive. I think if I've learned anything from the past couple of months, it's that life has seasons and cycles, you know, like how, how a year does. We have summer, autumn, winter and spring. Winter? We have summer, autumn, winter and spring. We have summer, autumn, winter and spring. And I think life's a bit like that. We have cycles and we go through seasons. I do think that life's seasons are far more temporary. I don't think, for instance, that autumn translates into a season of grief uh, when it comes to life. I think our life cycles and our life seasons are more day by day or month by month rather than set in stone. And like I was saying, you know, autumn I don't necessarily associate with the grief season uh, either. I think to me autumn symbolises, you know, something, something ending, but something beginning as well. Like autumn is one of my favourite, one of, sorry to disrespect autumn in such a way. <sighs> autumn is my favourite season ever. I feel like I was born for this moment. <laughs> Every time autumn comes around, I feel just lighter and happier and just it's just full of all my favorite things like my favorite colors my favorite foods wearing snuggly clothes and just evaluating where the year is has gone and where it's going i think autumn is a great kind of road mark in a year because you've only got three two months till christmas and then the end of the year and so I think it's a nice time to kind of see the environment change and see, you know, how life has a beginning and it has an end and we're all part of that cycle. And I think that's really nice and really important because it's a nice reminder that we're all part of this thing, no matter whether you're religious or not, or, you know, you believe in spirituality or you don't or anything like that. I think it's a nice reminder that we're all part of this this thing and it has a rhythm and we work with it and I always feel like in October it feels like I've been holding my breath all year because I've been a little bit stressed and a little bit you know whatever for whatever reason particularly in September and then October it feels like I can take a deep breath in and let it out and it feels like the first breath I can properly take after a couple of months of feeling a bit sad or a bit you know in my head about things. I think a lot of us struggle with the fact that October it means we're kind of creeping towards the end of the year we might start to notice that oh that new year's resolution I said I was going to keep I didn't or I said I was going to do this thing and now I only have two months left to do it and I think that is a really negative headspace to be in because you know we created the calendar we created January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. You know, the world works in its seasons like I think we do. And so what if you haven't done that thing you said you were gonna do in this year that we made up? It doesn't matter. It means that the next year, the next cycle of days, or whenever you want to start, you can start it. We put a lot of pressure on ourselves to do things and to be certain people. And quite often it's us, you know, stressing. I know I'm very lucky to say that because I haven't got a job in which people's lives depend on me or anything that is particularly, I was going to say anything that's particularly important. I don't want to put myself down, but like, you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not a nurse. I'm not a doctor. Um, and there are plenty of other professions I could use to compare myself to. So I am very lucky to say that, to say that I'm the one that's putting pressure on myself. But I think for a lot of us, we do put unnecessary pressure on ourselves and don't see it as the end of the year, see it as the beginning of a new one. And it's a fresh start if you want it to be, or you might continue doing the things that you've put into place this year. And I think that's equally as exciting. While we're talking about endings and beginnings, I did really quickly want to mention a charity that has helped me so much, particularly when Dan passed away and particularly when I've been on other kind of grief journeys. I know I use this charity a lot when my auntie passed away and I couldn't not mention them in this video where I have touched on grief and touched on, you know, subjects that might be a little bit triggering for some people. The charity is called The New Normal. They are a completely free service that is kind of alternative to one-to-one -to -one therapy. Um, when I started using them, 
I did online meetings. I finally got to the point where I knew that I needed some sort of help, but I couldn't afford it. So I found them completely accidentally. It was like fate and joined some of their online meetings. And basically what they do is they have volunteers, they train up their volunteers who are all incredible. And they have online, but they also have offline meetings too. I th think, think that's how they started. But I know from the online meetings you join, you know, you give a little introduction. You don't even have to speak if you don't want to. You can just say, hi, my name's Becca, and then mute yourself and just listen. But what I found most beneficial with them and what resonated most with me when it came to like going to a new normal meeting was that their whole motto or slogan is where there's one, there's two. And that really struck a chord with me because I was this young, widow and then also lost you know other people but particularly this label of widow was hanging on my shoulders and I was really young to be a widow um or at least that's how I always portrayed myself but then going to the new normal I'm not saying I'm glad there were other people that were in a similar situation because I wish they weren't but they were in a similar situation and suddenly I went from being oh, I'm a young widow, I don't like talking about it, to, yeah, this thing happened. It happens to other people as well. I'm not alone. I can talk about it. And it was just such an enlightening experience. It was hard. It was really hard. And, you know, they are very good with trigger warnings. If you're going to talk about something that might be particularly triggering towards someone, you say it at the beginning and it's all a really friendly space. Everyone is welcome, it's free, but there is always a but with these things and this fills me with so much sadness. They need support right now. Um, yeah, they need a lot of support right now. If I could give them all the financial support they needed, I would, but I'm not in a financial position myself. So I thought what well, best way to try and help them is to come to you guys. If you can spare anything, um, please consider donating to their urgent financial appeal. Um, they need to raise quite a bit of money during October time, but this is so they can keep delivering this really, really important service. Um, I know people who it, it literally saved their lives and I know a lot of you as well who have gone on and are on and been on grief journeys would benefit from it so much so if you can help in any way and that doesn't even have to be financially if you can share it you know if you can be kind of a silent supporter on their instagram or wherever that would be brilliant and it would mean the absolute world to me because they help me a lot and i know they save people so yes i will link their website up here or here, somewhere in the box. Uh, if you could go and check them out, that'd be great. I will also pop all their details in the description box below. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say on them because they helped in ways they won't ever probably realize. And, you know, I was always quite a quiet um, contributor. I would sort of sit in meetings and listen and you know, it would be a good kind of, it was just really cathartic. Like, and I came off those meetings. I remember I was living in my little flat, came off those meetings, sobbing, <laughs> but it was like a cathartic sob. It was like, I needed it. And I needed to talk to these people to be able to cry and give myself an excuse to cry. So yeah, anyway, that's, I just wanted to mention them because they're really important to me and I know some of you will really benefit from them as well. So I've put a lot of pressure on myself, you know, the past couple of months because I just feel like I have nothing to offer. I have nothing to give. Um, I waffle a lot and, you know, sometimes what I say doesn't make sense. Sometimes it's not received correctly. You know, I'm really open to criticism and constructive criticism, but sometimes you know, it's just, it, it's a bit difficult. And you know, like on my last video, there was a lot of very negative comments um, talking about why aren't you saying his name? What did he do? And for those of you who don't know, 
they are talking about my late husband. Whoa! It suddenly got super bright. Okay, Dan, I'm talking about you. There are so many reasons why somebody might not say someone's name online. This is now very much, you know, my journey. I know a lot of you do know about Dan and do know some of the story, but I want to make it very clear that you guys mainly probably only know about 10% of the story. Um, and also, he's not here to give his consent anymore about what I talk about and what I don't talk about. Um, so I was trying to practice a way of showing some anonymity and also care about when I was saying his name and you know because like I say he doesn't have he can't tell me what he wants me to say or not say anymore so you know particularly for people who are new here hi nice to see you um I don't want to bring things forward and I don't know it's really hard to explain but I'm not doing it in a way that's disrespectful it comes from a way of trying to be as respectful as possible and as you know kind to myself and to him and to his family and everybody else um so please if you're thinking about leaving a comment that sounds like you're part of the story or know everything about what happened or you know feel like I'm being a bad person for choosing certain words or not using certain words then can you maybe just like think that she maybe has a reason for it and that reason's not inherently awful I'm not saying I'm necessarily doing everything right all the time because I definitely don't but that particular decision definitely didn't come from a place of malice or disrespect so I just wanted to address that because I feel like I I feel like that was something that was holding me back because the last video I posted was about Poppy, was about my my cat, and you can watch it here if you're interested. Um, and the comments, yeah, some of them were just really nasty and I just wanted to, to clarify that I know and appreciate that some of you were just looking out for somebody else, but I was also doing that. Um, and I possibly will continue to do that depending, you know, on how I'm feeling and what I'm talking about as well. And I know, like, some of you will know who I'm talking about when I'm a bit, uh, cryptic and others won't and that's fine. So, yeah, I hope that makes sense. But I think I give myself a really hard time because I feel like to make a video like this it has to be worthy it has to have some sort of valid information it has to be interesting it has to be insightful i have to give something and i think i need to remember that just giving part of myself is enough so if i'm just waffling to the camera and waffling and chatting and doing whatever that's enough i think i need to remember that um i don't have to constantly you know i don't know i don't know i'm just i'm just voicing you know i've got I've got really low self-esteem and so recording videos is actually really hard and particularly when I let myself off and give myself an out and some time off I find it really hard to get back into so that's why I wanted to record this video because I've got plenty of other videos sort of lined up but I was feeling really unconfident with them so thank you for listening to me and listening to this little little piece little piece that sounds makes it sound like I've just given you like recited you a poem or something thank you for listening to my piece but anyway I will stop waffling now it has been 23 minutes I mean it will be cut down I promise hopefully by the time you guys see it but I'm gonna stop waffling now thank you so much for being here happy October I'm going to stop putting mass pressure on myself to give videos you know my absolute all and that they have to be perfect before I post them because I don't have to do that because I know you're all really lovely and some of you do just want to hear me waffle um so that's really lovely thank you I hope you have a lovely one remember endings also mean beginnings and look after yourselves it's a good one I promise and I hope you're all okay thank you so much for being here
End of credits fam! I have missed you. How are you? How's it going? Um, I hope that waffle was okay. I hope it made sense about what I was saying about using Dan's name and stuff, you know. I know none of you criticised me at all, but it was just, you know, one of those things that you probably saw in the comments that some people were saying, you know, horrible things. And some of you even rushed to my defence, which was lovely, which shows that you know there's a reason for certain things. So that made me feel very, very wholesome, thank you. Um, but yeah, I'm very grateful to have you and the fact that you make it to the end of credits fam. So thank you very much. Let me know what you're up to. Let me know how your October looks. Let me know if you've got any like spooky Halloween plans or any other kind of plans. Um, and I will see you in the next video. It was lovely to see you. Bye. I nearly knocked my face on the, on the mic. Oops.